and welcome back to Brew Beer 101. We're going to look today at making a sparge arm for the for the mash tun for when we're sparging. So what I want to do is I want to utilise my old boiler and use this as a sparge tank because this already has a heater element obviously in the bottom. So I'm going to change this valve for a washing machine outlet valve because it's got the correct three quarter inch outlet which we can then screw this hose lock connector on new brass hose lock and then using some flexi pipe we're going to bring it onto this effectively so i can have this on the sparge arm all the time and then quickly disconnect it from the sparge tank using these hose lock connectors so i've just been and got some bits and pieces together so we've got some 15 mil copper pipe two meter length we've got some 15 mil t's uh, some end caps and these reducers as well brings us down from the 15 mil pipe down to a 10 mil out but what we use these for is to clamp on to this with a uh, hose clamp for the 3 8 inch hose obviously if you're not using copper pipe make sure you're using food grade hoses uh, there's the washing machine outlet valve and we'll put the red tap on that to denote that it's hot just because it's a nice finish and then we're going to use this lid off the mash tun as our template so we know how big to make the loop so it's somewhere in the middle of the grain so uh, let's get to it just find that this five kilogram weight plate fits nicely in the middle of there so i think i'm going to use that as a bit of a a mold to try and bend the 15 mil copper pipe around the outside of this so we'll see how we get on doing that So as you can see, that did not go to plan. So luckily I didn't start too far down. We should have enough there to do what we need to do. So I was hoping to do it without using this, because obviously not everyone's got access to a 70 pound pipe bender. But we'll, because uh, it's going to be hard as well. I don't know whether I can get a full circle through here. Um, obviously it's normally de designed to do like 90 degree bends if you like without having to buy couplers every time a plumber needs to do a change in direction so we'll see how we get on with this take two so we've done a little bit and then every sort of inch or two I'm just kicking it a little bit round and bringing the the roller if you like from in line with that to in line with this little curved edge here just so I can sort of do them the same each time while trying to keep it flat as well I suppose that kink in the end of it is helping us keep it flat to the ground so we'll just keep plodding along just checking now that curve is about the same Yeah, it's about the same as what we've got for the lid, so let's just keep going with what we're doing and we'll see how uh, how it looks in a few minutes. So each time I bring in the kink the start of the last curve I did yeah, in line with the edge of this mat work and then that's from the roller around to this little curve line here is roughly where I'm bringing it to so the reason why we're using 15 mil pipe is because obviously we want to get a, an even sparge out so the the 10 mil pipe I think it obviously bends a lot easier I think it's too thin uh, we want this to be full with the holes that we're going to drill, uh, distributing it nice and evenly. So if we just check the, the curve again. And we're, we're not a million miles away with that. So I think, looking at that, obviously we've gone a bit skew with there. It's okay because it'll be alright once we bond them together. It's, it is just under the size that we wanted it for. 
So I think we'll do a couple more kinks. Let's see where we're at. So that to me now. Looks about just right. So we're, we'll chop the ends off and get a T in. So it's important, obviously, that where we want to join the end of the loop to, to itself, that we have two little bits of straight so we can get the T in. So it's going to be a, a little bit off on this side because of the T. But as long as we're slightly undersized, that should be fine. So it's just working out now where I'm going to have to put my cuts to make sure that this does fit in. So as you can see, I put the one end in, it fits nicely. So we're not a million miles off now. I've just got to get this piece to bend into there. So we just need to tighten it up a little bit. We can see now the size that we've got to work with. So just use the bending machine again now. Bring that, uh, bring that so these two line up. So I'm just going to work a couple more of these a few times just to level it out. So you can see now that there's a little bit of a flat spot on either either half of the loop. So I'm going to go and try and flatten that out now by standing on it on a hard floor, and then we'll see the T fits in perfectly there, and we're looking all right on the size as well. So so far so good, looking all right. So I'm going. Test it in the room. So as you can see, she fits absolutely perfectly. So the idea is obviously to put as much sparge water through as you can, nice and gently, and not disturb the top of the grain. So I think this will be ideal for controlling off flow. So halfway there. So before I do any soldering on the T to bring the rise pipe up, it's going to be easier to drill this on the floor while it'll still lay flat. So I'm just going to drill every inch or so all the way around the two mil drill bit and we'll uh, come back to you then. I made a dot every couple of inches. So I'm just going to round now with the dot punch so my drill doesn't slip. So you can see how tiny the two mil drill bit is, and the hole size is actually like quite big in comparison. So always start with a smaller drill bit than you think you might need. So I'm on a two mil. I didn't know whether there'd be three mil or two mil holes. So obviously start with two mil. But I think looking at that, it's going to be about right. So I'm going to go right now and drill more. Make sure you drill really slowly because copper is so soft. Obviously, um, with it not being soldered yet, don't worry about the swarf that's stuck in the inside because we're going to take that tee off and blow it all out so there'll be nothing left on the inside when we're finished. So there we are, all drilled all the way around now. So I'll flush this out to get any swarf that's in there out. And then be time to solder the the riser up. So as you can see, if in date with the aid solder, just cook it. Cook it till you can see the solder run out, it's the best way. I've just checked it for leaks by taping up all the little holes and then just blowing down there. And no air was leaking out. And if no air leaks out, then definitely no water under low pressure is going to leak. So we're good to go on that. So as you can see, that joint's looking a hell of a lot better now. It's just had a, a quick wire woolen. It'll soon tarnish again anyway, but at least it gets rid of all the burnt look. And uh, yeah. So here it is, the finished article. So it's all uh, shiny, 
got holes drilled in the bottom. I've had to put a 15mm to 10mm adapter on just so I can slide the 3 8 pipe over it. And then I've put a couple of inches of 10mm pipe just so I've got something to fix onto the Jubilee clips. And then on the end of the food grade hose, the 3 8 food grade, I managed to warm this up using the kettle, this pipe, and slip it over the hose fitting. And obviously with that being brass, it's nice and tight as well. So, easy clean. So all I've got to do now is the outflow of the boiler, the old boiler, used to go to a pump. So obviously I now want that to go to this hose connection. So I'm going to have to take that valve off and swap it for this valve. Because it's got the bigger thread, the three quarter inch. So I'm just going to crack on with that now. So in these hose fittings, you can see there's a rubber o-ring, so that will seal against the face of this valve. But obviously these are designed for cold water, so rather than trust that o-ring seal, we'll PTFE the thread on here and screw this on. And obviously we'll swap the blue handle light, because it comes with the red one. I've already adapted my old counterflow chiller, so that's literally ready to use now on the Brewster. So I'm just waiting for a new cam lock fitting so we can take the pump and connect it to this pipe, which will be the uh, wort in and obviously cold tap out, cold tap in, wort out on, on, on this, this pipe here. So I've already converted that ready. So we've already done one upgrade. There's a new thing in the bottom of the boat boiler. I've already made a new connection. So this is a nice snug fit into the pump takeoff hole down there. And basically how this works is it is that sort of shape and it'll draw down level using the slots on the bottom as a filter. And these work really, really effectively. Considering it's just 15 mil copper pipe with a couple of elbows chucked in, it's a it's a real good solution. And then that literally is a little bit of a tight fit. You just keep rag wiggling it, and it sits in there nicely, like, just like that. And that's ready to ready to go. So that's how that'll sit in there. So we've done a filter because of the problem that we had with the emptying and losing the three liters stuck in the bottom of the vessel because of all the sediment. So I think that'll cure that in the next brew. Um, the chilling. Obviously, counterflow chiller works way better than the immersion chiller, so we're going to not use the immersion, we'll use the counterflow instead. I've lost count of how many brews we've done in this boiler, the original boiler, but uh, you can see in the bottom the, the takeoff point over on this side is about an inch off the bottom. So, again, as a filter and a way of taking the, the uh, wort all the way from the bottom. This is what we come up with. So there's a slight elbow on it. So that just slotted in the bottom of there and sat in that pipe. So again, it doesn't fix in there. It just sits in there under its own weight. And that's about a quarter of an inch off the, off the bottom where the last veins are, where it's slotted. I've just given it a good scrub because it hasn't been used for quite a while. You can see it's come up like new again. So I'm just going to put some water in the sparge tank and test what flow we get through our new sparge arm. So, so I've only about half filled it. I've got a bucket in place. So this will be the first time it's been used. We'll know from this whether we need to drill more holes or do any any uh, adjustments. 
So as you can see we've got good flow out of every single hole that we drilled. So that's why I wanted to use the 15mm pipe rather than the 10mm. Just because there's plenty of uh, service water. And obviously we can adjust that flow down now using that valve. So I'm just going to make some metal hooks, three or four metal hooks that sit around this and clip this onto the edge of the mast tun. Which uh, I'll sort something out tomorrow, some metal wire, some stainless steel metal wire or something. Just make some nice solid hooks that just always stay attached to this. And it's just a simple drop on and off then on the mast tun. So I'm just going to adjust that valve and see how low we can get the flow down there. So as you can see that valve is very much almost shut. And we're getting a nice even and it's not disturbing the top of the water too much so that's perfect job exactly what it was aimed for and when we finish barging we we'll simply disconnect that pull the old hose lock connector off and that will just drain down so there we go so tomorrow will be day four on the last brew that we did the first brew that we did so that needs a stir tomorrow so i'll capture that for you and when we go to the 10 days when we do the final fg and uh, barrel it as well i'll do an update video then so we're looking forward to already looking at a second brew as soon as that one's out of the fermenting vessel only like one at one stage at one time so we won't do our next brew until the fermenting vessel is available again um, and then we'll we'll get the next brew on. So make sure you stay tuned to see how the different things I've made for the next time we brew are going to affect the quality of the of the product at the end of it. So that's it for today from me and the Brewster. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and like if you want it. And we'll uh, see you on the next video. Cheers.